In this part we want to find out how to partition a polygon into bimonotone pieces. To do that, we first want to classify the vertices that we have in a simple polygon. So I want to ask you, what kind of vertices are important? What kind of vertices can destroy the property that the polygon is bimonotone? And I want you to look at the angle and the direction of the angle of these vertices. So we want to classify it into two types, the regular vertices and the turn vertices. And the turn vertices are the important ones. And we say that a vertex is a turn vertex if the vertical component of the walking direction changes. So if I walk along the boundary of a polygon and I go up at some point and then I go down, then there is this corner at the top where the vertical component of the walking director changes, so it will turn. And these are the important vertices that I want to find. And there are four types of these vertices. The first one is we call a start vertex. So if you walk along the polygon, you go up and then you go down, and the interior of the polygon lies below. This is a small angle. On the other hand, if you walk up and then down, but the polygon lies above it, then we call this a split vertex. And here we have a large angle. And the same thing we can define for walking down and then up. We have an end vertex if the polygon lies above and a merge vertex if the polygon lies below. These are the four types of vertices that we want to look at. And it is clear by directly looking at these vertices. Whenever we have a split vertex, our polygon is not y-monotone. Because this line here does not give us a connected intersection. And the same with the merge vertex. On the other hand, the start and end vertices should be fine. And the regular vertices, where we go up and afterwards up again, or down and down again, they of course are also fine. The only problems we get are the split and merge vertices. And this observation we can formulate as a lemma. If we have a simple polygon, then it's y-monotone if and only if we have neither split nor merge vertices. So if I give you some polygon and it has a split or a merge vertex, you want to get rid of them. So our task is we want to destroy all these split and merge vertices and we want to do that by adding diagonals. The problem with doing that is we cannot just add any arbitrary diagonals. We have to make sure that these diagonals that we add do not cross each other and they do not cross the boundary of the polygon. So we have to find an algorithm how to add these diagonals in a non-crossing fashion. Let's first have a look at a split vertex. How could we treat a split vertex? For example, we could have a polygon that looks like this. And how can I now find a good diagonal that I can add? I cannot just take any because this one here, for example, would not be fine. But how do I find one that's okay? All we want to do this is we take our split vertex here and we look to the left and to the right. So we add a horizontal segment to the left and one to the right. This gives us two edges. Those we call the left and the right of V. Now if I look at all these other vertices here, some of them have the same left edge as V, which is these two here. Now these are good candidates to connect our vertex V2. But which of those two would you choose? We would choose the lowest one. So we pick the vertex W star that has the minimum Y coordinate among all vertices that lie above V and have the same left edge. So in this case, we will connect it to this one. There are two questions I have for you. First, why can I add this edge without an intersection? From this vertex, if we look to the left, we see this edge. From this vertex, if we look to the edge, we also see this edge. This is the lowest one above V that sees this edge. That means that if we look at this area here, there cannot be any vertex inside this. If there would be any other vertex inside here, this would not be the lowest candidate. So the only way that our edge would intersect something is if an edge crosses this that starts above and ends below this edge. So for example, it starts here and ends here and we have this connection. But now there is an edge between W star and left of V so it doesn't see left of V anymore. Or the vertex lies, let's say, here, and the other one lies somewhere over here. But now 
this edge lies between v and left of v. So this is not the correct left edge of v anymore. And then we have a contradiction. The second question is, why is there always another vertex that has the same left edge as v? Could it not be that we have some other vertex, say here, and now these two vertices don't see left of v anymore? Well, this is just a definition question. What about this vertex? If we look at this one, what's the left edge of this vertex? That's not really defined because we said we look to the left. But if we say that if a vertex lies on the left boundary, then its left edge is just the edge that goes downwards, then we are fine again. Because then we can connect v to this vertex, we can use exactly the same arguments. There cannot be any vertex in this triangle here. There cannot be anything that crosses it. And we have found our diagonal. And how would you efficiently try to find this vertex from our split vertex? If we just look at the split vertex and try to find this lowest vertex, then we have to walk around the whole boundary of the polygon. And this takes linear time. If we have a linear number of split vertices, we are again, again at order of n squared time. But how, maybe we can do the step in one go. In order of n log n time, I want to treat all the split vertices. And for that, we can use something that we've already learned. We can use something like the sweep line in the last lecture. So our sweep line basically looks like this. We start at the top, we move downwards, and we always have some left edges active. So which are the left boundary of the polygon. Here is this edge E and also this edge. And for all these left boundaries, we want to store a helper. The helper is the lowest vertex that's not below the sweep line and that has this edge E as a left edge. So if we get to this vertex, we check what is my left edge. It's E, so this becomes the new helper of E. Then we move on. We get to this vertex. We check what is your left edge. It's E, so this is the new helper of E. And then when we get to V, we have already found what is the helper of E. So we just have to look what is my left edge. It's E. Give me the helper and connect it to the helper. And that's basically how the algorithm would treat the split vertices. And if we do this, go from top to bottom, we can treat all the split vertices at the same time, in one go. And the sweep line we learned last week, it takes order of n log n time. How would you treat the merge vertices? Well, one way is we just treat all the split vertices. Then we flip the polygon over. Now all the merge vertices become split vertices and we do the same thing again and we're done. That way with two sweeps we can treat all the split vertices, all the merge vertices and we get a y-monotone polygon. But this is a bit boring, so I will show you another way how to do it all in one go. So how we can treat the split and the merge vertices together. So look at this example here. We have a merge vertex and that we encounter when doing the sweep. And at the moment that the sweep line finds the merge vertex, the merge vertex must have some left edge. So it must be the helper of some edge. Then we move on, and here we now find a split vertex. It has the same left edge, so we connect it to V, and we have treated the merge vertex. But this doesn't always have to be the case. Look at this example here. We again have a merge vertex, it gets onto the sweep line, it has a left edge here, so it becomes the helper of this edge. Now we move on and we get to our regular vertex here. And now this edge will be gone. After we move on from this vertex, we will not be the helper of any edge anymore. So that means that at no point in the future will we treat V, no split vertex will be connected to V. So in order to fix it, we have to connect it to someone else. For example, to this regular vertex that we found here. So the idea that we have is we go again through the sweep. For the split vertices, we connect it always to the helper of its left edge. And we treat all the merge vertices as soon as they stop being the helper of someone. So when the edge that the merge vertex is a helper of disappears, then we also treat the merge vertex. And we do this with the vertex that we just encountered on the sweep, like here. 
So the split vertices we immediately handle, but the merged vertices we only handle in the future. We just keep them until either a split vertex connects to them, then they're done, or until their left edge disappears and then we connect it to the endpoint of that. So let's have a look at our algorithm, make monotone. So we're given a polygon P and we again have to create some data structures. The first one is somehow we want to save this planar subdivision that we get. We want to save the subdivision of the polygon in some data structure D. And that we can do by saving the vertices, the boundary edges and all the diagonal edges. So for that we can use a graph data structure. For example, a doubly connected edge list. I won't go into detail here how exactly a doubly connected edge list works. The only thing that's important for us is within this data structure, every edge can find its endpoints in constant time and every edge can find the next edge if we rotate around one of its end vertices also in constant time. And then we again have two data structures for our sweep. We again have the priority queue on the vertices of the polygon, that's the event points of the sweep, and we have the sweep land status as an empty binary search tree, that's all the active left boundary edges on the sweep land. And the way that we order the vertices in this priority queue and the event point queue is the same as we did in the last lecture. If one has a higher y-coordinate, then it comes first. If two have the same y-coordinate, then the left one comes first. And now we do our sweep. So while we still have event points, we do something. And what we do is we extract the maximum, so we get the highest event point. Then we figure out what type of vertex this is. So is that a start, split, end, merge, or regular vertex? And then we handle this vertex type. And after we're done with this whole thing, then we return our subdivision. In step one, I already showed you how to do the split vertices. And for the other types, we don't have to do much. But in each of these types, we have to handle the merge vertices that lose their left edge. So in each of these steps, we have to handle the merge vertices that after this step are not the helper of the left edge anymore. How could that happen? If we get a starch vertex, it can be that it has a left edge here, and then there is some merge vertex that also has this as the left edge, and now it's not the helper anymore, so we have to handle it. In the split vertex, the same can happen. At an end vertex, it can be that there is some merge vertex here that has this as the left edge, and now this edge gets removed, so we have to handle it. In the merge vertex the same and in the regular vertex the same. So in each of these five functions we also have to handle the merge vertices. Now I will show you the case of a merge vertex. The other ones work quite analogously so it's a lot of repetition. We don't have to go through all these five cases. It's enough to look at this one case. And then you can easily figure out how to do it for the others. So let's say we encounter this vertex V. What edges are the important ones that we have to look at? There are two edges that we have to look at where something can change with the helper. The first one is the one above here. So basically the edge following V in clockwise order. This edge will be removed from our sweep plan status. So there can be a vertex that has so there can be a merge vertex that has this edge as its left edge. So we check what is the helper of this edge. And if it is a merge vertex, then we have to handle it. And we handle it by connecting it to our currently active vertex V, like this. And now there's not a merge vertex anymore, and we can continue. So we only have to remove E because it disappeared from our sweep line status. What about this other edge at V, this one here? Do we also have to do something for that? No, we don't, because it's not the left boundary edge of the polygon. We only do something for the left boundary edges, so this is fine. But which is the other edge that we have to handle? It's the left edge of V. After this step, V will be the helper of E prime. So it could be that there was a merge vertex before that was the helper of E prime. And after this step, it will not be the helper of anybody anymore, so we have to handle it. 
So we check what is the helper of E prime. And if it is a ver merge vertex like here, then we handle it exactly the same way we connect it with a diagonal to V. And then we just set V as the new helper of E prime. So this is how we handle a merge vertex in our sweep line. And for the other types it's similar. If we have a regular vertex, then we have to do something for the edge above that ends now. If we have a start vertex, then we have to do something to the edge to the left, because it loses its helper, and so on. So this is basically the whole algorithm. So this gives us two lemmas. The first one is, if we use this function make monotone, then we add a set of non-intersecting diagonals, and we partition P into its Y-monotone subpolygons. And the proof for that we did on the way. We showed that all these edges that we add, we always use the same argument. We always only connect a vertex to the helper of its left edge. And we showed that the connection of a vertex to the helper of its left edge is fine. It cannot intersect anything else. So as long as we only add these type of diagonals, the whole thing is still non-intersecting. And the second lemma is, we can do this in order of n log n time. We can subdivide a simple polygon into y-monotone polygons in order of n log n time. And that follows here directly from the sweep line. Because we have order of n steps, we have one step for every vertex. And in every step, the operations we do are on this binary search tree. But it's a constant number of operations. So each of them takes order of log n time. And sorting the vertices in the beginning also takes order of n log n time. And everything we do here in the doubly connected edge list, that's even faster than we can do in constant time. So here, n steps, every step takes order of n log n time. We have order of n log n time in total. And in the next part, we want to find out what we can now do with these bimonotone polygons. How can we triangulate such a polygon?